Okay, so a few of you have come up with an answer. Um, let, me, let me walk you through this one because again, it requires a bit of different thinking. We're so used to finding an answer. It's like, well, just tell me the value. And then, you know, you get a number at the end and you're like, hooray, okay, and you can test it out. With inequalities, things are a little more flexible, okay, as I'm really gonna demonstrate over here. We'll come to example three in a second. So, remember I said to you before, we've dealt with simultaneous equations in the past, but these guys are simultaneous inequalities. The first thing that you do when you encounter simultaneous equations is you've got to be able to name them, right? You've got to be able to talk about which one's which. So that's the very first thing I'm going to do. I just give them labels so that I can refer to each one, okay? From then on in, I have to make some choices, and this is, by the way, very important because you guys know, um, especially when you submit your problems, but all the time in mathematics, you've got to be able to communicate clearly. I'm not just going to launch into some algebra. I'm going to say, what am I doing? Like, where am I starting from, right? So that's why I've given these labels. I'm actually going to start with inequality number two, right? So if I at least say, and I think you should as well, don't just have a, a, a statement that just comes out of nowhere. Tell me where it's begun. Particularly when you've got three to choose from, I need to know which one. If I just start by writing that out, one of the reasons why I've started with this one rather than say equation one is it's what we call an inequality in one variable. Do you notice it's only got x's in it? By the same logic, equation, sorry, inequality three only has one variable in it, it's only got z. Uh, inequality one has two variables, x and y. So immediately it's more complicated and I look at it and I think, mm, I'll come back to that one. And I will. Inequality two though, it's not too bad. You can see I can subtract six x from both sides which would leave me with this. I can subtract 19 from both sides, which would leave me with this. How does that look? Are you comfortable with that? Okay, at this point, I've already seen before, I'm gonna divide by a negative number, namely negative four, so that leaves me with this, but what happens to the inequality? Fantastic, so it's flipped around. Now, this result here, it's nice and simple. I don't know, how big x is in relation to y and z yet, but I know how big it is in relation to 1. So I can't go any further in terms of simplifying this. I'm going to call this 2a. Now I could have called it inequality 4. Um, I could have called it inequality 81 if I wanted to, and maybe you've chosen some kind of naming system. I like to choose a naming system which helps me know where this inequality came from. That helps me not, like, especially when you've got lots to deal with, um, not double back on myself and like, which ones have I dealt with again? Uh, it also stops you substituting an equation or an inequality back into itself, which is not a good idea. So now I'm done with two. I'm going to have a go at three. Why am I going after three again and not one? It's only got one variable in it, so it's going to be simpler to deal with. Okay. It's even easier than inequality two. I'm going to... What shall I do? Subtract six from both sides. Like that. And then I can divide both sides by negative five, which again, switches this around. Okay. Now this is inequality three, and now you can see a picture is starting to form. Do you notice this? I don't have any statement that has x or z together. But if you think about these two at the same time, because they are simultaneous after all, they do say something together. Right? I guess the way you could write this is like so. If you combine inequality 2a, inequality 3a, you can actually have an order here, right? Which is the smallest number in this scheme? Z. Z is less than 1, and 1 in turn is less than x. Do you agree? But what that tells you is that z is less than x. Right? Because, actually, I don't need to really worry about one. You can clearly see the order that this is going in. Does that make sense? So, I'll just file that in the back of my mind. The last inequality that I um, have to get information out of is the first one. So, one. What shall I do? I'll subtract. Excellent. And then, lastly, I'll divide again, because they're trying to get you to um, get a handle on this. I've got to make sure this inequality switches around. So I get this. And now our picture is complete, isn't it? Because I know which is bigger out of z and x, and now I know which is bigger out of x and y. So therefore I can say, 
from, let's name this one A. Let's name this one. This is a bit tricky because it comes from different, different spots. I guess I'll call it 2B. That'll do. From 1A and 2B, I can say Z is less than X. I could say that there's a 1 in there, but I don't need to. Is less than Y. Therefore, Y is largest. OK. Are there any questions on that before we have a go at the next one? Are you, are you comfortable with the idea? So you can see immediately the logic of equation, inequalities is different to the logic of equations, but there are a lot of commonalities.